over the last 15, 10, 15 years, we have made tremendous progress on access to water and sanitation for, for people. What we now see is, is the rest of that agenda to create universal access to water and sanitation and fully realizing the human right to water and sanitation. To do that, we can't leave anybody behind. We need to provide services to all citizens of every walk of life in every situation. And this agenda is an important agenda that we need to make our, our top priority, I feel. I'm Ger Bergkamp, the Executive Director of the International Water Association. Last year, uh, governments agreed on the Sustainable Development Goals, um, and water plays a key part in that. Um, and it's only just now starting to dawn on a lot of people that work in water that this is a fantastic opportunity. If you start doing a bit of the maths, actually, it's actually quite interesting that we have never done this before. Um, just take an example. We want to have wastewater untreated going into rivers by, by 2030 is the target. That means that we need to treat wastewater of 700,000 people, new people, every day between now and 2030. It is never done before. China did about 90,000 per day uh, in, in the last 15 years. So this is like, this is the core of the profession, treating wastewater. We know how to do this. And, and so to me, what I'm really fascinated about is that this have government in an intergovernmental process have agreed. So it's, we can't no longer say, well, the governments do not do it. It's like, no, we are now in charge. So I think this is, this, I, it's totally fascinating to, to have that currently on our plate. What, what you see um, very often to get to action is that the pressure needs to be on. If it's sort of okay-ish, yeah, we will muddle through. So what we're starting to see that in places where you have water scarcity and drought, you're starting to see that pressure. And certainly different actors, whether it's farmers or mayors or or environmentalist, industrialist, because there is no water, or they are cut off the water now and then, or pretty much seriously, they start to say, well, we need, we need to do something. And that's the opportunity, that, as an example of what an opportunity is that comes from the agenda, with a reality that is changing rapidly. On top of that, we have climate change, that increasingly will be generating fluctuating conditions, much more fluctuating uh, than we are used to. So we used to plan our water on long-term averages. We now know in many places where you've got water scarcity and drought, they don't fit. They don't predict anything anymore. And this is really a challenge. It's the fundamentals uh, of what we actually were basing our water management on um, are gone. We need something else to deal with water scarcity and drought. Now, what is that? Practically speaking, we need to do three things very well. First, in a way, we need to say, well, all these inefficiencies that we have in many places, we're losing water everywhere. You put it in the pipe and only half arrives at where the point of use. Then we say, well, we use water once and then it's just gone. No, we can reuse it over and over again. So then certainly you is look one liter becomes used, but it becomes another liter, becomes another liter. And so being uh, in the mode of reusing water can tremendously augment, in a way, the amount of water available. And of course, part of water scarcity and drought, I mentioned about these fluctuations, you need to buffer, you need storage. But that we don't do at all. What we do with groundwater is we take it down and down and down and down and down. But that won't work. So we need to replenish the aquifer. And in a way, if you, if you start putting that all together, it starts to feel like, well, let's create a, a water-wise world. Wisdom is needed because this is not so easy because otherwise we would have done it. So it's working with communities, with farmers, with, with citizens, with mayors, with industrialists, to bring people together, 
start discussing this, make them a little wiser, more insight in what is going on, take some actions, learn from that, and then prepare them for the next step. Because we need to be making a lot of steps along the way towards water security. We won't leapfrog everything. Hopefully we will have some leapfrog little, but we will have to bring communities along in a step-by-step -step process to build the water security that they will need for their economy, for their health and their prosperity.